Hey, I'm Alex Radical from Board Game Co. and this is News and Week in Review. This is actually the first video I filmed since uh, last week's Week in Review. The amount of times I have filmed zero videos in a week, it, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I have streamed a few times. I've streamed once or twice, but uh, no new filming until uh, this video. But let's go ahead and dive into this. I am finally getting over my uh, sickness and the stuff that makes me just want to be like, oh no, forget it, let me just sit down all day and play video games because nothing else matters. It was it was not the best week. It was not the worst week. It was probably the second worst week. Worst one was probably COVID. Let's go ahead and dive into this video because this is already taking off a weird turn. This is board game news and we can review and all those things. Uh, timestamps as usual down below, links to all the relevant subjects. It will be a little lighter, all things considered. There'll be no topic of the week unless the topic is how sad and depressing this past week has been for me. Or unless it is, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get to it. Starting off with news though, only a handful of things over here. We have an announced expansion for Mil Fiori. Mil Fiori, which is definitely on my list of games that I want to table. In fact, I'm going to put it on the table right now. I'm going to add it to the table. Mil Fiori, list of the games I want to get tabled hopefully this week. Uh, but they have an expansion uh, announced upcoming in some way, shape, and form. We have Thunderworks Games announcing Goblin Vault, another game in their um, universe. Actually, I don't actually know if it's in their universe, but I imagine if it's Goblin themed, it would be weird to not put it in their role player universe, so I assume. Uh, but that's a card game for people who like classic card games with bidding and betting and things and cards. Lots of cards are, are going to be in the game. I'm definitely sure about the card part. We have Flow from Pika Games. Pika Games being the uh, offshoot company from Fantasia Games for like more family focused, kid friendly, although I don't know if it's kid friendly or family focused. It's not It's not Unconscious Mind or, or, or Endless Winter Levels, but it's uh, Flow, which looks fantastic, designed by Henry Audubon, who is fantastic. So uh, yeah, we'll find out more about that, but that was already announced, but they're, they're putting out more information about it. They'll be coming in 2023 and things and stuff and so flow from pika games check that one out that one looks cool it's just because the designer the publisher and the art all look amazing that's a good starting point they move the footsteps of Dar darwin from sorry we are french again one of the best games that best game one of the best names ever for a publisher sorry we are french but they have coming out in the footsteps of darwin and then lastly in big news that i saw just like five minutes before filming this we have terra mystica age of innovation doesn't sound like it's an expansion. It sounds like a like standalone game. So basically, here's the order, okay? We have Terra Mystica. Then we have uh, Gaia Project. Then we have Terra Nova. Then we have Terra Mystica Age of Innovation. At a certain point, you have to ask how many versions of the same game do you actually need? Uh, at which point, 51st State and Empires of the North and uh, all the 14 versions of that will raise their hand and say, uh, pick me, pick me, we got 15 versions of the same game over here. But we'll see. I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, I liked Terra Mystica, but didn't love it. I liked Guy Project, but didn't love it. I haven't played Terra Nova, haven't played Age of Innovation. I feel like I feel like I have played it, played Age of Innovation, not because I've played it, but because the the name just sounds like it sounds like fourteen games I've played. I definitely played Innovation and Age of like fourteen other things: Age of Inventors, Age of Rome, Age of other stuff. I'm sure there's more Age games. Either way, those are what we have as far as news pieces. So that's what we have there. As far as topic of the week, uh, not that the week has sucked. That that sounds like a bit too dramatic, but. I have been sick for the past like eight days and I am getting over it now. But again, this is the first video I'm like officially filming since last week's Week in Review. And even that video, I planned on filming another video after, but I just didn't have the energy, the voice, the interest level, any of those things. I, I've had a fun week, mostly classified by just waking up getting as much work as I possibly can done, not filming anything, just like just like emails and game found stuff and other things that I could do that don't require a voice and looking alive. Um, and then followed by just, you know, playing Overwatch to distract myself. I've played very few video games, uh, sorry, I've played very few board games and done no videos because it's just been one of those weeks. And, and the interesting thing, this is one of those things, I should be talking to my doctor about this, not to you, honestly, but like ever since getting COVID way back at the beginning of, well, COVID, I feel like when I get sick, I get sick longer. I don't get sick that often, although I did get sick in October, and that was not a fun few weeks either. Uh, but it feels like it just lasts longer. Although it might just be my imagination of all like the COVID after effects or this or that. All I know is that I don't like getting sick. I don't like the way it sounds. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way any of it is, which makes me a normal human being, by the way. Not liking being sick does not make me special. That makes me fairly normal and traditional. Um, but it's just... Fortunately, I will I will say this. Fortunately, I have a backlog of videos ready at any given point in time, which is why, despite not filming anything in a week, I've still managed to have, like, 
the same 14 videos I have up every single week because I, I have a backlog. And some weeks my backlog is more flexible than others because sometimes those videos are more time sensitive and I have to film them and this and that. And so sometimes it's more evident, which is why like, the last time I was sick, I'm pretty sure I still filmed not as much, but I still filmed a few videos here and a few videos there just to make sure I stayed on top of things. This time around, I was able to, I only missed one video, although that video went up this week instead, basically the um, upcoming ca crowdfunding campaigns for January. Usually I try to film those in like the last day or two of the prior month for the next month. Uh, this one went up in like four or five days into January because I was like, I got nothing. I just can't, I can't keep up. I, I, I Here's a bunch of campaigns and uh, I'm sorry I'm late because I couldn't film this on time. It was supposed to go up last Friday and it didn't. It went up this past Thursday instead, for the record. I'm saying that optimistically because I'm actually filming this before I film that. So I'm just saying that with the optimism that after I film this video, I will go film that video. I'll be wearing the same shirt, you'll see. And um, hopefully that actually happened because if not, that'll be the second time in as many weeks where I said this video is going up and it didn't. And last week's Week in Review barely counts as a video either. That video was like so off the usual beaten pace of what I do for a Week in Review. I just didn't have the energy. I had no energy. I had no mind for anything. I was like, I'm going to sit on camera and just, I'll talk for like eight minutes. And I, I managed to go for a full 12 minutes, which was not bad for the way I was feeling. Basically, some things in life just don't like it when you're sick. And putting out constant video production is one of those things that's not a huge fan of the of the principle of just like, you know, being sick. It's like, hey, I know you have plans, but um, how about you do other things instead? But past that, it's been good. Again, every day, one day, every day has been one day closer towards feeling better. Every day has just been one day closer. And right now, I'm, this is the first day where I really feel like energetic again, which is nice. I might even go like drink something soon coffee obviously obviously like i mean I, I had like four days of no coffee by the way i took caffeine pills and had tea that's the kind of life i was li living it's horrible it's horrible and i know there are people who have much worse off than me i'm not like in any way trying to over dramatize it's but it was not a fun week it was not a fun week but it's all good everything's better now back to playing board games and filming videos and being back in the in the swing of things sometimes doing things just keeps you going and just falling apart well, has you falling apart. But with that, let's go ahead and dive into the weekend review, starting off the bat with what I played. Let me give me a second here. Let me take a look here. The what I played, I have most of these logged, I want to say, actually. I did take the time to log my plays. That was nice. And my insights for the year. Ooh, I should do an insights for the year video. Ooh. Ooh, I kind of want to do that now. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll do that today. I could do that today. Ooh. I'm excited because I, I insights of the year basically using my, my BG stats app over here, like where I go through like the stats of the year, but I played 1,280 games in 2022, which is up from the um, 11, let me see a second, let me check, check, wait for it to load, up from the 1194 in 2021. So um, I'm up like, what is that, like 7% higher? That's not bad. I'll take it. But going to the actual games I play, let's take a look over there because that's what we're trying to do right now. And I don't even know, technically I should count last week's two, but I'm, I don't have the energy. We'll just go through. Again, I, I played some things, but not a ton. We have My Shelfie. Some more games in My Shelfie, still enjoying that one. Oh, I'm supposed to be doing, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I'm supposed to be doing uh, Dedicated. Okay, let's, 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 let's switch this up. Let's start this off. It's a new year. It's a new list. I said a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, that I would consider doing a more selective conversation around specific games as opposed to a an in-depth, as opposed to a rattling off the list of certain games. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with Mindbug First Contact, okay? So I'm just picking certain games from the games I played, or in the case of this past week, it might be like most of them because there's a shorter week, just not shorter week, a less games played week. Mindbug First Contact. Had a chance to play that one. That is a two-player head-to-head game with a common deck of 48 cards with fantastic art and cute abilities and this interesting principle in which you have these mind bugs, effectively. Each player has two mind bugs, which is an opportunity to steal a card when played. And so every time I play a card, no matter how good the card is, there's always that knowledge in the back of my mind that my opponent might steal it. You just have to be mindful and play out the board state and all those things. And it's a very interesting puzzle that I just don't feel the need to play again. There won't be a full review on that one. Uh, I found Mindbug to be... Very, 
I found it. I, I love the principle of having a mind bug in play that forces your opponent to consider what to steal or not to steal. I found that for the most part, the game played out though as you know basically two people trying to like constantly finding ways to counter each other, just constantly finding that opportunity between the keywords and the cards, the strength of the cards, the abilities in play. It was counter, counter, counter until eventually one player couldn't, and then that player just fell apart. It was okay, but it didn't have deck building in a way that would make it feel compelling, and the powers felt a lot very evenly strong and balanced in a way that was satisfying to play and not compelling to play again. I liked Mindbug. I thought it was very clever for what it's doing, and for the 48 deck of cards that you have, I think it's a good game for a lot of people, and it's one that I just don't feel the need to dive into again. Then we have, uh, let's see, let's go through Gloomhaven again. Let's talk Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven is one that I play a lot of because I play it on a regular basis over on Camp Co-op, but let's talk Gloomhaven all the same because Gloomhaven is one that I, I'm still enjoying. And I just went through my second retirement of a character and just dove into a new character for the first time playing as the, oh dear lord, the Void Warden. Almost forgot the name. Uh, the Void Warden is now the uh, third official character I'm diving into, although I've played more than that because I've tried different characters. When I first played Gloomhaven, I tried the uh, Spell Shaper. Uh, spell Weaver, Spell Weaver. Uh, sorry, when I first played Gloomhaven way back, I played as the uh, the Cry Cart, uh, but I don't really have that many memories of the Cry Cart, so I can't really heavily go into that. When I played through Jaws of the Lion, I have played through uh, the Void Warden, the Chain Guard or the Red Guard or whatever he's called, as well as the uh, Demolitionist. I played through all three of those in Jaws of the Lion. And then when I dove into Void, uh, Gloomhaven again, I played as the Spellweaver, uh, followed up by the Mind Thief, who became my first love in Gloomhaven. That's the first character I truly learned to love. Uh, followed by trying other characters when the Mind Thief retired and not loving them. I didn't love Hatchet, didn't love the Mind Thief, the, the Spellweaver again, trying that again. And then finally tried the Scoundrel again and loved the Scoundrel. Scoundrel was a, a very different styling, but I grew to like the Scoundrel, I want to say almost as much as the um, Mind Thief. It's hard to say for sure, because I definitely loved the Scoundrel a lot towards the end. But the, the Mind Thief for me was still the uh, one of my first loves. And it's hard to compare, like, you know, where I was with them when they each retired. But then I dove into the Void Warden. Uh, specifically trying as a support class, trying to heavily focus on granting attacks and cursing the enemy decks to basically make it so that we are stronger as a team, but that my individual actions aren't necessarily that much more powerful. So far liking it. So far liking the Void Warden. Only one game under my belt so far though, but then again, diving into new characters other times were like, I hate you, I hate you, I miss my old cast. But now I'm kind of liking them, so we'll see what happens. But I like the journey that Gloomhaven gives you. I'm 100 hours plus into it, and it's still a lot of fun. I find Gloomhaven gives you a lot of game. A lot of game. Now, I am playing it digitally, which is how I recommend it in general. That or Jaws of the Line are the two ways I've most experienced Gloomhaven. Playing regular Gloomhaven physically, I've only played like three games when I first got it, and then never went back, so... I still own it, but at this point I like the game enough that I think I'll own it no matter what. But it is a lot of game. It's a lot of game in a lot of ways, and, and I'm very excited for... I'm all excited for more stuff. I'm excited for more content, or Crimson Scales for that matter, or Forgotten Circles. Lots of things, lots of opportunities, lots of things there. Uh, then, once we're talking about other games, let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and talk about, again, selective titles over here. Let's talk about Baron Park. Baron Park is one of the polyomino games that I constantly go back to and constantly enjoy and constantly recommend. It's one that I just find is accessible on so many levels. I enjoy playing through Baron Park. It's, it's, it holds up as far as, and I, and I think the expansion is essential, by the way. I do think the expansion is essential, especially if you're finding yourself getting a little bored of the, the, the typical Baron Park game. Because Baron Park, the way it plays out is you play a bunch of polyominoes, you're trying to go for certain goals. I always recommend playing with the goals, unless you're playing with kids, in which case, maybe not. But you have small little uh, mindful aspects, to, things to think about in terms of how you're going to approach your Baron Park engine every single time. But for the most part, the game is the same. For the most part, the game is grabbing the right tiles that fit into your board in the right predictable area. And I do find the expansion with the um, monorails and the additional tiles does mix up the experience enough that if you find yourself getting a little bored by it, first of all, you have a fifth board, so that's even more, that's 50, that's 20% more Baron Park or 25% more Baron Park in your life, which is a good thing in general. Uh, you combine that with the extra tiles and the monorails and you have a, a, a challenging puzzle that you have to think through as you go through the game. And I do like the monorails. I think they're a little high on points in terms of the fact that I think they're almost essential as opposed to just another thing. But I do like them, and I think they give you another thing to be mindful of in terms of how you build out your park and what you do. Uh, I find Baron Park is just, again, again it's a game that works uh, at, at a kid level for me, as well as a game that works as an adult level, or, well, it just works at any level. And then lastly for this week, I will pick uh, Lost Wounds of Arnak as the last game I want to focus on. 
Another game that I always recommend with the expansion, but even without the expansion, it still holds up for me. Lost in Zavarnak is one of those games that manages to attract a lot of people who fall in the category of why do you like Lost Dreams of Arnak? Like, why, why it's overrated? I, I hear the word overrated thrown at it a lot. And in general, I, I find the term overrated to be overrated, I guess. Uh, I, I find it's a term that when you use it with an acknowledgement of you, the difference between your own opinion and the masses, I, I, meaning if you use it with a degree of self-awareness that your opinion is simply different and is also the minority, I don't find it to be necessarily a problem. So, for example, if I sit there and say... What's a game that's overrated to me? I don't even know. What's a game that's overrated to me? Top games on Board Game Geek. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. I should probably look at Ark Nova. Ark Nova, okay? Ark Nova is a game that, to me, I don't think it's that great. I think it's good. I enjoy it. And I also recognize that I'm in the minority. And it's not that other people are wrong. It's just that I don't see what other people see. And that's okay. I don't have to. When it's used with a certain acknowledgement of of what it is in terms of other people's opinions versus your own. So when I say Ark Nova is overrated to me, I'm okay with that. If I just walk around saying, wow, Ark Nova is overrated, people just, people like that game for no reason. I don't know why it is. Well, then I'm just a snob. Then I'm just somebody who is really saying my opinion means more than everyone else's opinion. And that just sounds like a bit of an egotistical stance to take in general, no matter who you are. Now, it is slightly different if you're comparing yourself to, let's say, my rating to Amazon. Not because I'm saying my rating's better than other people, but I'm saying it's a different crowd. So, for example, if I say, hey, I know a lot of people rate Monopoly pretty well, I don't love Monopoly, it's a different cr when it's a different crowd entirely, a different type of personality as far as what you're doing, that's a different conversation. But within the category of being a board game snob already, to then further be a board game snob and be like, those people are all wrong, whatever. Point is, that's just, give me a minute for, like, my high horse about Ark, Lost Ones of Arnak. But a lot of people have been very vocal about how uh, Lost Ones of Arnak is a overrated game, and they don't like it, and they don't understand the hype for it at all. All those things are fine. You don't understand the hype for it, fine. You don't like it, fine. Lost Ones of Arnak is delightful. It's, like, the, like, 28th highest game on Board Game Geek, so p clearly people see it as being delightful. Uh, whether or not that works for you is a different conversation, and that's okay. Uh, for those of you who appreciate Lost Ones of Arnak, awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I certainly enjoy it. This is a long tangent for Lost Ones of Arnak. I probably should stick to reading games off the list next time. But Lost Ones of Arnak, I think it's excellent in terms of the puzzle it gives. I think the, 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 the constant challenge as far as how to combine the cards and run up different tracks and to explore and to how to use different aspects of the game in your favor, especially once you combine the uh, asymmetric rules of the game, I find it's beautiful, it plays quickly, it's accessible, it plays well at various player counts, it's non-confrontational for those who want something non-confrontational, which again, the classic Dune versus Arnak conversation, if you want confrontational, if you don't want confrontational, that kind of answers part of the question right there. If you're fine with both, as I am someone who's fine with both, then there's different aspects to look at as far as what you prefer. But the same way non-confrontational might be a con for some in Lost Ones of Arnak, it's also a pro for others. Uh, there's also a solo mode, as a solo app and a challenge to go through in different ways that I haven't actually explored. Lord, but I probably should because I like solo games. But yeah, I like Lost Ones of Arnak. It's beautiful, plays quickly, very well player counts, and it's just all around a game that I enjoy every single time I play it. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into the week in review, starting off this past week with Saturday. This past Saturday, I did a review for three micro games uh, for the, Na the Nano 9 series from, I don't remember, Capstone Games and um, Albin... Alban Viard, I believe, or I believe that's, I'm hoping I'm getting the name correctly. Uh, but that was um, Empire City Planning and Railways, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, three micro games. I thought I thought they were all fantastically designed, very well designed, given the constraints at the at the of what they had to do to design the games, meaning nine cards, nine cubes, and nine dice. Ultimately, only one of them felt natural to me. The other one, and that one I still didn't love. I just, it was very well designed. I just wasn't for me. And the other two felt like they were kind of forced and constrained into the nine card system, which for me is almost already a loss. If I can see the design constraint around what's being designed, then as much as I respect what you were able to do with that, for me, I don't want to see design constraint around a game. I want to play a game that feels like it was designed optimally, not feels like it was designed to fit a certain metric. That's where I was with those. All of them had promise to a degree. None of them ultimately worked for me. I'm sure they will find 
people that they work with. Uh, then later on Saturday, we had a review for Keep the Heroes Out. This one I was much more torn on. I really liked aspects of Keep the Heroes Out. Uh, there were some deathless aspects of it that I really enjoyed. The art's fantastic. The characters are cute beyond belief. Everything about it was top-notch as far as presentation. Uh, there were some small gimmicky aspects. Not gimmicky. There were small aspects of the game that I felt were... What was that? There were some small aspects of the game I felt were... Uh, could have been smoother in terms of the the balance of the game in different ways, especially around various player counts. Uh, some small little nitpicks like that. I wanted more deck building in the game. Overall enjoyed it. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. On Sunday, Sunday I had a video for Please Support the Channel. Uh, going into a whole bunch of, you know, reasons and support the channel and these things and those things. Uh, it's basically a, uh, considered an end-of-the-year drive kind of conversation. I'll have these from time to time. It's the nature of, well doing what I do and trying to do what I do while taking as little money from publishers as possible. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have more of those conversations. But in the meantime, feel free to check out that video and or support the channel. Thank you. I appreciate it. There's a Patreon. There's a channel membership. There's a Ko-Fi. There's a coffee. Is it, I think it's Ko-Fi, right? Ko-Fi? It sounds like Ko-Fi. A whole bunch of different options available. Uh, whatever you pick or choose is much appreciated. Then on Monday, Monday we had the final top 10 of all time. The uh, top 100 ended with the 10 through 1 with myself, Devin, and Meg going through it. Uh, they ran this one as a premiere, had a lot of people tuning in. Appreciate all of you. Hit like 430 active people watching it, which I strongly appreciate. You are all the best. Thank you. Uh, and had a lot of fun. It is the, the conclusion of the top 100. Uh, next year there'll be more pictures throughout the whole thing. I'll like have pictures like they're running the whole time so you can actually see them. I'll I'll figure stuff out. I've, I've been experimenting with different options as far as ways to show pictures while I film without having to do b-roll so um we'll figure it out anyways that was monday so that was that on tuesday tuesday we had dice kingdoms of valeria that was a i enjoyed dice kingdoms of valeria but also felt like i don't need to play it compared to uh card kingdoms of valeria so it's a role in my game one of three games in the new line of games i so far played the siege game which i do enjoy and i'll have a review of that at some point i have not played the trick taking one and dice kingdoms of valeria i was looking forward to and it's totally totally fine but it also doesn't, uh, it wasn't amazing for me either. Then later on Tuesday, we had Unlock Kids, which is basically Unlock for Kids. Uh, the review almost felt unnecessary because the review was good in the sense that it told you, hey, if you're hoping for a good Unlock game for kids, this is a good Unlock game for kids. But it's also for kids, it's not for adults, and it's uh, Unlock, and there's no app, and that's everything you need to know if you know about Unlock already. Good game, I like it, I recommend it for kids. Later on Tuesday, we had uh, Railroad Inc., a review of Railroad Inc. with myself and Devin uh, going through that one. Really enjoy that game. I think it's a fantastic game. I highly recommend it. It's Railroad Inc. It's amazing. It's excellent. It's phenomenal. I'm going to run out of words. I like it. It's Railroad Inc. Good. Gave it like a 4.5 out of 5, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's a good game. A 4 if I'm doing just the base game, but 4.5 if you're looking at the whole collection. Fantastic Roll Knight. Highly recommend it. Then later on Wednesday. Wednesday we had a bunch of videos uh, going up. We had uh, 5 New Year's resolutions for board gamers, in case you want a bunch of ways to... Uh, either do or not do things board game related. Uh, then later on Tuesday, we later on Wednesday, we had an unboxing for Descent Legends of the Dark. Unboxing it just because that's the first and somewhat essential step in terms of actually getting it played at some point, which hopefully will happen. I want to play the game. I do want to play a lot of games, but that's just another one of the games I want to play. And then lastly on Wednesday, we had another live video. This was a few things. It was 2023 games that we are looking forward to with myself, Devin, and Meg. This is the weekly live. We do this every Wednesday, although the time seems to vary. Uh, and then also, we also had a trivia show. In fact, last week as well, last week's weekly live and this week's weekly live, we had like trivia show and all that stuff. So if you like board game trivia, if you like seeing people know or not know things, if you want to play along and see if you can figure out the answers that they couldn't, well, then watch, watch the weekly live, and there's going to be more trivia, because apparently that's the new segment we're doing. It makes the show much, much longer than it's ever supposed to have been, but we'll figure that part out. But it's it's trivia. It's trivia. I like trivia. Do you like trivia? Do you know board games? Do you even know board games, bro? Do you? Do you? Prove it. Come come join the show. Anyways, who am I today? I'm sick. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i just pretend. I'll just cough. Give me a second. I'm not going to cough. The problem with fake coughing is I keep wanting to fake cough to show that I'm sick, but then when I fake cough, it actually drives me into real coughing, and that's not fun at all. I don't like the real coughing one bit, so we're going to go back to the show. Going to uh, Thursday. Thursday was upcoming campaigns for January. Probably. Like I said, I'm filming that right after this, so probably. Thursday, upcoming campaigns for January. A bunch of exciting campaigns for January, mostly, sort of, a little bit. Uh, January still seems pretty light, which is good. Save the money while you can. I backed way too much in November, and my December wallet is still recovering. My January wallet should still be recovering. We'll try to keep things uh, a little bit responsible and safer. But that's January's video. That's uh, Thursday's video about January. Yeah. That. Friday. 
Friday we had the best 10 games of 2022. There were three videos for you. The best 10 games of 2022. 2022. First of all, we had a video of myself talking about the best 10 games of 2022, in case you're interested. Then we had a video with Devin and Meg talking about their best 10 games of 2022. I'm not in that video. Well, that's not actually true. Technically, I'm in that video. In the background of the video, but like, sort of. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of there. I'm not really there. And then lastly, video number three is over on Patreon. That's the uh, top th 11 through 20 of 2022. It's me going through the other 10 that I didn't make the first cut. So if you want more, they're over on Patreon. Yes, we do a Patreon dedicated content every single week, by the way. There's like four or five videos that go up on Patreon every single week. Dedicated Patreon content just for all of you who are supporting the channel. Appreciate you very much. Thank you. And, and for the rest of you, there's like 14 other videos a week, so you're still fine. But that was Friday. Which brings us to today. Today we have a few things coming up. We have a Fire and Stone review from Pegasus Spill, and we have a Gartenbau review from 25th Century Games. Check out both of those in case you're interested in... Well, those games, or or in case you're not interested in those games and want to find out if you should be interested in those games, then those are both good reasons to watch those videos. Yeah, I recommend it. And then from there, we have next week. Coming up next week, we have a few things. First of all, we have games leaving the collection. I did a large purge for, uh, for the end of the year. I did a large purge. So I have a whole bunch of games leaving the collection. You can check out that video. Yes, that, by the way, games leaving the collection is staying on the channel. Once upon a time, I suggested maybe it wouldn't, and a bunch of you were like, no, please keep it on the channel. And so I was like, I hear ya. So, okay. So, it's staying on the channel. Yeah, so there's that. But that's going up. So, we have Games Leaving the Collection for December. Uh, we'll be showing up. That's an end of the year purge. Big video going up next week. Enjoy that one. Thank you very much. And then lastly, we have 2022 games we need to play more. Myself, Devin, and Meg going through a bunch of 2022 titles that we, we need to play more. No, we need to play. No, just we need to play. 2022 games we missed and didn't get to play and that we want to play. And so, we're, we're going to talk about this. And also, surprise trivia in that video, too. This time, not about board games. It's about Lord of the Rings. I almost coughed there. We're not going to cough. We're going to make it through this video without coughing. With that, we bring you to the games on the table. Games on the table, we have the following. These, as usual, are the games I hope to be tabling this week. First of all, we have Frosthaven. Hope to be diving into more Frosthaven, which we're doing over on uh, Camp Co-op. I'll link to that channel down below. But there's a bunch of Frosthaven content if you want to check that out. We have the first, like, four videos up. We have, um, three videos up? Three, three videos up. We have uh, picking our class, four videos. There's a bunch of videos up. I don't know how many videos there are, but there's a bunch of videos up. First of all, we're playing through Gloomhaven over there, but secondly, we're playing through Frosthaven. We've picked our classes. We start off the adventure. We've done the first three, first few scenarios. If you want to go ahead and stay tuned for the whole Frosthaven journey, there's going to be videos going up once a week, every single week, until forever, because we'll never finish this game. But, but enjoy. Please, please join for that. And then also, in addition to that, we also have Namiji, which I hope to be playing from uh, Fun Forge Games. Mil Fiori, which if I can get Devin to play, we'll play Mil Fiori as well. And then lastly, I should really be playing through some more Bargain Basement Bathosphere. I started this like, um, I don't know, uh, beginning of the month. I started this. I, I, got, th I got this at PAX from uh, WizKids, and uh, I started playing through the first few scenarios and then kind of didn't since then. So I probably should do that because board games are good. Board games are good. I like board games. And with that, we're going to go ahead and call it wraps on this video. Thank you so much for sticking around. I appreciate all of you. Um, I appreciate all of your um, you being around while I was sick the entire week and didn't film a darn thing. And now I'm going to go film like 14 videos to make up for it. Hopefully my voice is still going to be fine. Hi, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. This has been your News and Week in Review. I appreciate all of you being here. And, it's... and as always, I hope you have a good one.